Greetings, my beautiful underworldlings. <laughs> Welcome to today's message from the underworld. I thought it would be really fun to get a little bit more like structure around how we do each of the readings in the morning and the evening. So what I'm going to try for a little while and see if we like it is... Um, um, I don't usually take flyers in this deck. <laughs> in this deck, I choose. Um, I'm going to do, if you're not familiar with this deck, it's the Blind Spot Oracle deck. And so I'm going to find... I'm just going to pick a blind spot that we're going to dig into together. And this is so fun. This is actually um, when I started doing tarot reading videos, like way back in the day. This is what I did. I just did different blind spots um, from this exact deck, actually. So this has many years of magic stored in it. And this is what we're going to do from now on with these maybe this one right here okay so what i'm gonna do is we're gonna get one of these i'm gonna read about it because i don't have these sigils memorized and we'll get some clarifiers to tell us how it's showing up in our lives and what we can do about it so we've got blind spot 56 Ooh, the comfort zone. Okay, here we go. Make sure you guys can see it all. Okay, if you have drawn this sigil, you are not clearly seeing that so much of what you are doing is about your aversion to the unfamiliar. And sometimes aversion to the unfamiliar is a way to ensure you will never line up with what you truly desire and truly need. Things that are familiar feel safe to us. They feel known and predictable and controllable. It is perfectly understandable why we gravitate towards things that are safe, but it can lead us to a life of limitation. When we are familiar with something, like a culture, for example, we tend to have an aversion to contact with or use of ideas, practices, products, and even knowledge that exists outside that culture. It doesn't take a genius to see how much of a problem that can be. The misconception people have about anyone who is afraid of getting out of their comfort zone is that they're afraid of the unknown. Knowledge is often used by the ego to keep itself away from the rocky seas of uncertainty, but the idea that anyone fears the unknown is totally false. You don't fear the unknown. If we truly feared the unknown, babies would fear everything and they do not. What we fear is what we project onto the unknown based on our previous experiences. When we are facing the unknown, the mind goes to work projecting its already acquired fears into the unknown to try to predict what lies there and then goes to work trying to figure out how to avoid those fears. It is those projections that we fear. For example, if we quit a job that we have been working at for 10 years to do something radically new and different with our life, we are venturing into the unknown. But we don't fear that unknown in and of itself. We fear the potential failure and fall from grace that we could, that we could experience socially by venturing into the unknown. We fear this because we have experienced the feeling of failure and fall from grace before and wish to avoid that feeling at all costs. And we fear the potential unwanted things we predict that the unknown could contain. If we learn to not project our, feel, our fears onto the unknown, the unknown would no longer be scary. If you have drawn this sigil, you are using the fears you are imagining. Oh, hang on. Okay, 
If you have drawn this sigil, you are using the fears you are imagining exist outside of your safety zone to validate your choice to stay in the safety zone. And so you are a prisoner to your own refusal to feel uncomfortable. Getting out of your safety zone, which is what you really need to do at this time, implies being willing to experience discomfort for the sake of your own expansion. If you have drawn this sigil, you probably already know what you need to do as opposed to staying in your comfort zone. You are probably well aware of what you are avoiding, just not fully why. Therefore, once you know what step you are called to take that is outside of your comfort zone, what feels like a stretch for you right now, you need to take it. Okay. So let me, I want to dig into what situation in the past is lending itself the most to our fear and what we are holding back and the way we're holding. I feel this deck, which is interesting. Okay. I'm not going to, for these, I'm not going to get clarifiers until, um, oh my gosh, my nose got stuck on this until I know what the blind spot is because that's going to inform which deck I grab. So what in the past have we encountered that's led us to this particular aversion to leaving the comfort zone? Okay. And let's get, I want a why question. Um, Let me think, how do I want to phrase this question? Oh, okay. What was the truth underneath what happened? What did we not see in the past? I feel like this one that's sticking out is standing out to me. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is, I think off the bat, super relational. Um, I mean, all of life is, right? But this particularly has to do with relationships and connections. This might be a, a pretty significant, I'm actually feeling friendships, friendship wound. This doesn't even feel very romantic, but it's interesting because I'm also feeling this revelation that I had um, just a few months ago where I realized that my aversion to relationships was actually, <laughs> it wasn't romantic in nature. It was my friendship wounds because ultimately I realized one of my deepest desires for my romantic life is that my romantic partner be my best friend. And so even though I had developed an openness somewhat, still had a lot, like still opening in small ways. But even though I had developed more of an openness romantically, I had deep friendship wounds where I didn't feel I was a good friend. In many ways, I wasn't. And so that was actually what was holding me back. And this feels a lot like that. This feels like an aversion to new community. This feels like an aversion to new new friends. Um, could be romantic partners, could just be getting involved in the social life at your job. Like, yeah, the six of cups right here and this with these two like lemurs. I don't know if you guys can see. It's just like, it's really giving heavy friendship vibes to me. Like these two little creatures feel like they just really want to be friends. <laughs> you know, like they're just trying to hang out and this this one's arms kind of extended to the flower but I sort of feel like its energy is like pulled away like it's not really fully in that moment and so I think that's the situation in the past like maybe like me you feel that you failed your friends so many times you just like don't deserve new ones maybe you have had people offer something and you didn't actually receive what was offered you offered something else as well 
So if this is you, I would say definitely dig into any place in which you're not really clear what your value is in a relationship and what you bring to the table. You know what I mean? Like, what is it that your energy has to offer? What is it that your embodiment has to offer? Um, well, yeah, like, I'll just use myself as an example, but like, you know, I had a friend recently tell me, she was like, me and my friends talk about you and we call you the person of peace, which is like, feels a little bit arrogant to say, but it was just like the best compliment. So it's like, I really offer, and it's a little bit just because of my traumatic past, like, I can really find peace and joy in just about anything. So like, I am like a great support for friends when people have passed away, you know, like I can really hold space for someone who's deeply grieving. So in that sense, what I bring to the table is a pretty significant amount of developed emotional capacity, right? So in the highs, highs, and in the low lows, I'm pretty good now at just like staying in my peace or at least really quickly being able to get back if I'm knocked out of it. Now, what else do I bring to the table as an oracle, right? Like I'm pretty insightful. Like when I really love people, like really, really love people and let them in my world, like I will have dreams that are like warnings to them. Like I will have dreams that are like insight into their world. Like I even have them for some people I don't know who I've never met, who I just like follow on social media and like really love from afar. <laughs> and it's like, I have dreams and it's like, I don't go to them and say, hey, I had this dream. I just do my own energy work on it, assuming that that information came to me for a reason, right? But it's like, those are all kind of like woohoo things that before I wasn't really valuing. And so I kind of felt like, well, I need to, you know, have like a really sustainable income to bring into a friendship. I need to be able to, I don't know, offer really lavish gifts on birthdays, right? Like I need to, um, I don't, I'm not even thinking of like another one right now, but it's like, to me, a good friend was so many things that I wasn't bringing to the table. And instead of valuing what I did bring, I was focusing on what I don't have, which is funny now because with what I do, this is the value that I bring and it is what's attracting me friendships who really value those parts of me. And I do have like a lot of my dream friendships, like because I, I was like, well, okay, if I value this part of me, then other people will start to do the same. And so I say all of that to say, all of those parts of me that were really hard for me to, I should say, all those parts of me were buried beneath the expectations of what I should be instead. Um. Oh, okay, here's a really good instance. Actually, I was feeling really insecure that I can't offer stability to a friendship. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to move to this city, but like, who knows if I'm going to move somewhere else in a year. And like, I thought I needed to offer my friends like, the consistency of place, right? Which is like so goofy because so many people are transient these days. And even as a New Yorker, like, right, where I went to school, it's like everybody is. And none of my friends really expected that of me. And in the end, what's funny is one of the compliments that I get from those same people I felt like I wasn't a good enough friend to is that they're actually really inspired by <laughs> how willing I am to like up and move and like relocate and just like follow those whims of desire and just like trust that those desires that I have in me are there for a reason. Like that was the part of me I was really shaming and it was what my community valued. And so I've used those really practical examples because I want you to understand not only are, are you potentially just wrong about what people are expecting of you, but I bet that what you naturally bring to the table is what attracted certain people to you in the past. And it's possible that your own judgment of what is and isn't valuable in you is what ended up deflecting this relationship like in the way that you were offered something and then not really given it what I'm trying to say is like it's possible that you actually weren't able to receive it due to a lack of self-worth in yourself like do you love those parts of you do you accept you fully do you choose you fully are you able to like clearly and distinctly 
list the ways that you offer value. Like, you know, like it, it may not really make sense on paper, right? <laughs> But it's like we're all trying to be different in a way to like gain an acceptance when like everyone's really actually enjoying what we're bringing to the table if we would just release the judgment that we feel like we need to be something differently. Like another one of my friends was like, there's this quote that says, um, I think it's a T.S. Eliot quote about how when other people love something, it gives us permission to love it in the same way. And she was like, you make me feel that way about life. Like you just have this zest for life and it just makes me feel like I could love every moment. And so like, I really think about that. And because she's told me that I develop that, like I focus on that. And I, 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 it's like a muscle. I work that muscle because I know it's what it is true of me. It feels genuine to my nature and it's what other people value. And so I think we, we lose our stability when we just try to develop things we think other people are going to value that aren't really authentic right or we're developing things just because it's like well I want to be authentic but like no one's really <laughs> like no one really cares for you to develop that right so it's like a both and and what I also want to say about that is like these are pieces of feedback that I got years ago like years ago so maybe go into the archives with this like because we can go into our archives, not just to clear trauma, but to also get the gold. Like these people who used to be in your life who, yeah, there is some healing to do. They also probably offered you really great feedback. And that feedback may not even be in the form of criticism and things to correct and shifts to make, but they could have pointed out accurately what's really valuable in you and like what does make you an asset, you know, like do you have integrity? Do you value honesty? That's a huge gift. Like there's a lot of people who just don't. <laughs> right? Um, do you find joy in every circumstance? Like that's an amazing gift. Like it's hard for some people to develop that. Um, are you optimistic even in the face of challenges? Are you patient? Are you compassionate? Like there might be a lot of soft skills you really bring to the table that you just aren't really valuing and that also maybe got a little bit trampled in the pain of this past. So we want to have a lot of understanding for that, but you get to revive that now. And then what you weren't seeing in the past was, yeah, this is like the truth. The protection of the truth is how I'm feeling like, oh, how do I don't want to put that. It's like, you know, it's like, here you are right now listening to this reading <laughs> and like as goofy as that sounds it's like however difficult it was like you got through it and so I think you're also not valuing your strength your tenacity definitely patience here even with yourself and that if I would say anything moving forward it's to slow down and to really appreciate how far you've come and that what you learned and gained from this was how to grow your own garden and protect it as well. And instead of going, instead of approaching someone afraid and, and holding back while expecting a huge bouquet to come through on your behalf, now you're like, okay, I've got a garden here. I've got my own bouquet and it's protected. And I'm at rest here. I'm at peace. And you gained those flowers, so to speak, by choosing forgiveness through this, by choosing yourself through this, by offering forgiveness and compassion to yourself and the other party. So now here you are. And it's like, it's almost as if you're learning how do I want to say that? Comfort zone. It's like the comfort zone. It's like you've created a safe space for yourself in your own heart. And so you're able to step out of that comfort zone, knowing that you have a safe space in yourself to return back to, to develop an inner sense of safety and also a greater capacity to deal with challenges like look this sword is I'm really just drawn to like 
the, its size. It's like you're really able to hold yourself in so much more now. I feel like you're not appreciating your capacity. That's what it is. It built your capacity. Like you are capable of going through significant challenges now. Look at the challenges you've already been through. So like, what do you really have to be afraid of now? Right? Like you're able to be stronger now. Like you went from like a meek little monkey, barely able to receive a bouquet to like a lion at rest in a robust garden, protected and strong. Like that's who you are. And so now we still have our inner monkey who like gets to go out to play, right? <laughs> I want a world where there's still monkeys. I love them. But you're also able to tap into your inner lion and just say, you know what? Even if this goes poorly, I can hold myself in that. So I don't need to stay in my comfort zone because I can handle it if things go wrong. I can handle it if I'm not given what I want because I've already done it. I can make it through that because I've already done it. This sort of gives like the worst is behind vibes where it's sort of like, that end, oh my gosh, I love it so much. The end of Eight Mile where um, Eminem goes for his the last rap battle and he just lists off all the things that he knows that the guy's going to say about him. He's just like, yeah, I am live with my mom in a trailer. Yeah, I'm broke. Yeah, this other person like slept with my woman. Yeah, you're right. Yep, uh-huh, this and this and this. And like lists off all these things that he knows would be the ammo against him he lists them off and then hands the other guy the mic. And it's like, go ahead, tell, tell these people something they don't know about me. You know, like, tell me something that I don't know. Like, take me somewhere I, I haven't been. You know, like, <laughs> like, what kind of a pain could you possibly bring up? Like, what, like, I've already been through so much. I've been through this, 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 and this. Like, what's next? Let's go. Run it up. Come on. <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> That was my, that was my, um, recurring phrase of last year was just run it up. You know, whenever something painful came, I was like, yep, run it up and like, let it just sink in. Whenever something great came, I was like, yes, run it up, like run up that score, you know? And like when something came that I didn't like, I was like, yep, let it in, let it in, like run it up, like let this move through me so that I can become the kind of person that's just like able to withstand this, right? Like you built a capacity to withstand that I feel is lacking your appreciation. You don't realize the strength you developed in this time. You don't realize how strong you are now to be able to go through, to be able to get out of your comfort zone and be fine no matter what happens. Like you are stronger than you think. So be willing to change the way you think. You are more capable than you think. So be willing to change the way you think. All right. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you all so much for joining me. Um, for these have been super fun. Uh, I hope you guys like the blind spot deck. I'm going to use them for a few readings and just see what you guys think. Um, but we'll probably roll with it for a good, at least a good week or so. <laughs> Um, so if you guys would like to work with me, you can get all the information for how to do that in the link below. I do offer astrology chart readings. There's a one and a two hour option for that. And you can also get a private tarot reading that is a one hour as well. They're all sent via MP3 so that you have lifetime access to them. So they are yours forever. And I have people who I did readings for years ago tell me that they're still relevant in ever unfolding layers. So I have no doubt that it will serve you well on your journey. And you can also connect with me on other social media profiles below as well. The links to my LinkedIn where I do daily readings for entrepreneurs is there the link to my instagram the link to my tiktok all of that's below and be sure on this video to like share and comment if it was helpful let me know what it meant to you and be sure to subscribe to my channel as well and hit the little bell icon if you would like to receive a notification um, for any of my videos i do two tarot readings a day uh, every weekday <laughs> and the occasional teaching video as well. So thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.
拜。